Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Today I am bringing you a pattern that was requested by a viewer. And I love it when viewers request me to make something because then I know at least one person's going to be interested in what I'm making. So if you have anything you'd like to see me make or explain, uh, just leave me a comment and I will uh, certainly try to get to all the requests. Okay, today's project is a laundry bag. And this person wanted to make some for Christmas presents and I thought, what a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? So I'm very thankful that she did. All you're going to need is one yard of fabric and two pieces of rope or cording or string or whatever you intend to put in the uh, casing to draw it close. And these are each about 45, 46 inches long. This that I got, it, I got it a long time ago, but it was in the drapery department of a fabric store. And uh, it's used for like pools when you make different kinds of blinds and stuff. Uh, it's also used for piping. You can put fabric around it and then uh, make piping out of it. So I think it's called cording or piping or something like that. And if I can find some listed online that I'm sure is the same thing, um, I'll link it in the description box. Okay. First thing we need to do is spread out our one yard of fabric. And we're going to want to cut this in two down the middle this way so we have two pieces. And my first instinct would be just to cut on this folded line. But if you will look, this isn't folded very straight. Now, obviously this did not come from a quilt store. It's something from Hancock Fabrics that I've had for a while. Uh, so the better quality ones are usually folded a little better. And this is okay quality. It's just not quilt store quality. So the first thing we need to do is line up our edges and re-iron in our seam. Let me make sure I've got it. Because we want to make sure that both pieces are the same size. That's the whole point purpose of cutting something in half. I hope I'm getting enough of this on the video. It's kind of hard to get the whole piece in here. Okay, so my crease now got moved over a half to three quarters of an inch. But that's what we wanted. Because now it is perfectly in half. Well, no, it's not on this end. I need to iron it just a little bit more, I think. Yeah. Okay, now my next step is going to be to cut it right down the middle here and we want to trim off our selvage. So I'm going to take kind of a shortcut due to limited space on this cutting table. And I'm going to cut off about a half inch on this end, and that should get the bulk of the salvage, if not all of it, and if there's still a little bit left on there, it's gonna be caught up in our seam anyway. Okay, then I'm gonna turn it around. Instead of cutting it right down the middle with scissors on that fold line, 
I'm going to cheat a little bit. This is faster. And just cut a sliver off. All the way down. And that cuts our fold off. And we now have two pieces. So when I open it back up. Well, I'm all thumbs. Well, I didn't quite get that. Well, it was a good idea, but <laughs> there's a little piece that didn't get cut completely. So I'll finish that with a scissor. But the rest of it's cut fine. Okay, now we have our two pieces. This is going to go together really, really fast. We want to put right sides together. And since I have a directional print again, I always seem to choose those. We want to make sure that this is the top up here so that our cats are facing the right direction. And we're going to sew on all three sides, but we're going to leave a little gap on both sides for our drawstring. So let me start pinning this and get it kind of lined up, and I'll show you how to mark where we're not going to sew. And always put your pins perpendicular to the edge you're going to be sewing. Uh, no, yeah, perpendicular. Uh, so that if you happen to run over one, you just run over it once. You don't hit it and run over the whole thing. Turn it over this way, be easier to pin it. And lay it smooth. Strings are always in my way. Pin it around across the bottom. And then up this other side. Now we need to leave a gap unsewn on both sides that is going to be for our drawstring. So we want to measure down from the top. About an inch and a half. I'm going to put a little mark right there on both sides. Then I want to measure another inch from that and put a mark. Now this is going to make an inch wide casing. So you can use something up to an inch wide. Of course you don't want to use anything that big unless it was really soft. Now we're going to take it to the machine and so let's sew about a half inch seam on this one. Sew down and skip our little one inch space. Go all the way around and when we're coming back on this other side, we want to skip this one inch space and then take it off the edge. Okay, let's go to the sewing machine.
now that we've sewn this on, on three sides, let's clip our two corners down here at the bottom. Just at an angle across there, not cutting your seam, but just to get rid of some of the extra bulk. Now, I want to iron it the seam open just because the finished product will look better. So I'm going to do it like this and then flip it to the other side and do it. So let me go around and iron this first and then I'll show you our next step. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to take the top and we're going to turn it under about a quarter of an inch and iron that all the way around. we've got that done then we want to turn it down about an inch to about an inch and what we want to happen is let me turn it so maybe you can see it better it's when you turn this down an inch here is your casing your hole to put your cording in but this we're going to stitch it down all the way around, but we want it to fall beneath the lowest part of our opening. So our stitch is going to fall. Here's our opening. Our stitch line is going to be right down there. And then we'll we'll go ahead, we'll come back and put one right up here too to make our casing. Uh, everything inside of it looks smooth. So we just have two seams here to sew. I'm going to lay this down and measure it about an inch all the way around and pin it and then take it to the sewing machine. So you can watch me do that. Now that I've got it in, I think I'll go ahead and iron it and that'll make it easier to sew. Okay, I'm going to take it over to the machine. I'm going to first stitch down this side, making sure my quarter inch is kept tucked under. Go all the way around. Then I'm going to come back and edge stitch all the way around the top.
let's turn our, looks like a big pillowcase. Turn our laundry bag right side out. Make sure we poke our corners out pretty good. They should poke out pretty easy because we clipped them. Then I'm going to iron it on the seams. Now all that's left is to thread our cording through there. And when you cut this cording, you need to put a little piece of tape on the end and bef before you cut it. And so the little bit of tape's left on the part you cut and there's tape on the, on the remainder uh, because this will fray real fast. And after we've got it all threaded in, we'll tie a knot on it and then we can take that tape off because we don't care if it frays then. But I'm going to use a bodkin. You can probably use a safety pin or, or something similar. But I'll link this bodkin. is just, uh, they're cheap and they're worth their weight in gold. So I will link that below. Now, we're going to start on one side, thread it all the way through, and come back out the same side. Then we're gonna take the other piece and start on the other side and go all the way around and back out. This way, when we pull it, we'll pull from both sides and it will draw up real nicely. Okay. I've come out the same place that I started. I'm gonna pull them about the same length. Tie a knot with both of them together. Tie it pretty tight there. And then you can even double knot if you want. Then I can take this tape off and it can fray all at once. It'll look like a tassel or something. I'll take that off a little later, but I'm trying to get it in there evenly. Okay. Now then we'll do the other side. Okay, so we have a knot at each side. Trying to get it a little even there. And now when we pull it, it just draws right up. And there is our laundry bag. Now, when I was thinking about how to, what I wanted to tell y'all on, on making one, I thought of my days using laundry bags like this. I got something like this for graduation when I was in high school. Somebody made me one, and I probably still have it somewhere today. I used it forever. and um, But mine had a great big pocket on the front, and I sure liked that pocket because I lived in the dorm on the 10th floor, and the washing machines were in the basement. So you had to cart everything down to the basement to do your laundry. And of course, you always put it off to the last minute anyway. So uh, 
making multiple trips up and down to take everything. You just didn't want to do that. So it was nice. Had that big pocket. You could stick your laundry detergent in it. You could put a book in it or something you were studying on uh, to read while you were down there. And so I think a, a nice big pocket on the front would be good too. But you would want to put that on before you sewed it together. So you might consider that. Another thing you can do, instead of using cording or piping, I don't know how much this is, I don't think it's real expensive, but you could take um, strips of fabric that have to be long, they have to be at least 45 inches long, and fold it like we do for bias tape, or you fold two sides in, you know, you make it about an inch wide strip of fabric. Fold it in till it met in the middle and then fold those two together. We do that a lot uh, when we're doing anything with bias tape or uh, making handles for purses and stuff like that. So you could take that and then stitch it closed, stitch it down both sides and have you a drawstring that's a little bit wider and is made out of the fabric. And uh, if you have enough fabric to do that, you're gonna have to cut it lengthwise, unfortunately. Uh, and it, you know, you could make this bag a little bit smaller and cut off a couple of inches on one side. So it would be a couple of inches shorter, uh, wide, not as wide, but that would be fine too. And uh, well, thir that's only 36 inches though. That wouldn't be enough. You'd need more than that. Or you could uh, use a fabric that just coordinates with it. But if you don't wanna have to buy string, that's an option too. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. I am so thankful for my viewer who suggested it. I wish I had looked up her name before I did this, but um, oh, that didn't fold it right. Uh, I, I thank you for, for doing it, and uh, I hope some more of you will send me suggestions of things you'd like to see me sew. Okay, if you would, please like, subscribe, comment, something like that, whatever you haven't done, and I appreciate it, and uh, I will see you in two or three days on our next video. So remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord.